some understanding Sasa that when the Lord decided that he is going to use the blood the blood of the lamb to distinguish between Egypt and Israel that blood of the lamb that was going to be shed in Egypt became the imagery the prefiguring the foreshadowing of the Messiah that is what became the image, the portrait of the Messiah that would come, he, whose blood was going to distinguish the church. I found out that he was saying that each household family must go and look for a perfect lamb. Lazima waende wamtafute mwana kondoo mkamilifu. Professor Mbula you are focused on me, right? Professor Mbula unanilenga. No, so a perfect lamb. Kwa hivyo mwana kondoo mkamilifu. Each household. Kila nyumba. To take a perfect lamb. Wachukue mwana kondoo mkamilifu. Without defect. Asiye na lawama. But look at this now. Lakini tazama hii sasa. I hear him say. Namsikia akisema. Listen what he says. Sikiliza kile anachosema. However, anasema hata hivyo. If the household Iki, is too small for a lamb. Ikiwa watu katika hiyo nyumba ni wachache kumaliza mwana kondoo mmoja. You must share it. Lazima mshiriki. With the next household. Na nyumba nyingine. I looked through the Bible. Nikapitia kwenye Biblia. Again and again. Tena na tena. And I went back and looked again. Na nikarejea tena nikaangalia tena. But never Never did I get a place in the Bible where he said, however, if the lamb is too small, but I heard that if the household is too small for the lamb, you must share. Lazima mshiriki. He's saying anasema that the Passover lamb of God ya kwamba mwana kondoo wa Pasaka wa Mungu is sufficient. Anatosha. More than sufficient. Zaidi ya kutosha. Sufficient. Anatosha. To deliver. Kukomboa. And save. Na kuokoa. And he says na anasema hey, hey. So then I'm asking, what is this corruption I'm seeing in the church? The church of Christ today, when I look at her, I see her as if she's saying that, hey Lord, look, the Passover lamb, I have partaken, and it's not enough for me, and she's not yet delivered. But yet the Lord is saying that however if the household is too small then share it meaning the Passover lamb of God is always more than sufficient to deliver everybody to deliver everybody. When you look at women in the church. In Europe. Kule Europa, Australia, Australia, United States, Machimbo ya moja Marekani, Canada, Canada, Asia, Asia, Kenya, Kenya. The women are in nudity. Wana wake wana tembea uchi. They are saying, wana sema, look, tazama, the first Passover lamb you gave, wana kondo wa kwanza ulie mtoa, ain't enough to deliver me fully. Ali akukule akwa wakutosha kunikomboa kikamilifu. And yet he says, na ilihali anasema, however, hata hivyo, if the household ikiwa nyumba is too small ni wachache mno for the lamb kwa mwana kondoo share it shiriki wewe wewe hey. wewe hey. today leo we are living tunaondoka we are living tunaondoka today we must go leo lazima tuondoke if the passover lamb is enough ikiwa mwana kondoo wa pasaka anatoka we must do what israel did they offered it walitoa and that same night na usiku huo huo they left wakaondoka why has the church not left kwa nini kanisa halijaondoka why hasn't the church left ni kwa nini kanisa bado halijaondoka they are saying wanasema that lord 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 ya kwamba bwana 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 look tazama this 
Passover lamb you gave us huyo mwana kondo wa pasaka uliyatupatia is enough just ni wakutosha tu to give me a name salvation kunipatia tu jina wakovu but is not able lakini hawezi to remove me totally from sin kuniondoa kikamilifu toka kwa dhambi and yet the lord is saying na ile alibana anasema in the word katika ulimwengu never ever Do you ever encounter utawai kukutana to a place mahali where he says ambapo anasema however hata hivyo if the lamb be too small ikiwa mwana kondoni mdogo look for another lamb tazama mwana kondoni mwingine eh 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 which other lamb mwana kondoni gani eh hapana no there is only one lamb kuna mwana kondoo tu mmoja and is more than sufficient ni zaidi ya kutosha to save all people kwa kwa watu wote to deliver all church kwa kanisa lote he say anasema that deliverance is coming at the midnight hour ya kwamba ukombozi unakuja saa sita za usiku salvation is coming at the midnight hour unakuja saa sita usiku but when i hear him there lakini ninapomsikia pale i get a message napata ujumbe i hear him say namsikia akisema that hey ya kwamba hey are you aware je mnajua that when it comes to the design for salvation ya kwamba inapokuja kwa muundo wa wokovu the blueprint of salvation alama za wokovu at the midnight hour wakati wa saa sita usiku when it comes to the matters of partaking of the lamb wakati inakuja kwa masuala ya kumshiriki mwana kondoo are you aware je mnajua that each individual person must partake of the lamb himself ya kwamba kila mtu mwenyewe binafsi lazima ashiriki mwana kondoo to be saved at the midnight hour ili aokolewe wakati wa saa sita za usiku ah, ah. But when I look at the church lakini napolitazama kanisa I see many people there naona watu wengi pale who have not yet partaken of the lamb ambao bado hawajashiriki mwana kondoo Pastor I'm struggling with sin Mchungaji nangangana na dhambi Pastor Mchungaji I am struggling with sin Ni nangangana na dhambi Oh you are struggling with sin Ah uh, unangangana na dhambi Ah uh, it's because you don't sow a good seed Ah uh, ni kwa sababu ukupanda mbegu nzuri So give me a good seed Kwa hivyo nipatie mbegu nzuri I'll protect the lamb on your behalf Nitashiriki mwana kondoo kwa niaba yako Hallelujah Hallelujah No way Hakuna He says Anasema that now this lamb ya kwamba sasa huyu mwana kondoo that you are to take ambayo mnamchukua must be a perfect lamb lazima awe mwana kondoo mkamilifu without defect asiye na dosari and he say na anasema that when you take this lamb ya kwamba mnapomchukua huyu mwana kondoo in the month of aviv the first month na mwezi wa aviv mwezi wa kwanza he says anasema on the tenth day katika siku ya kumi each household kila nyumba must go and take a lamb lazima waende wamchukue mwana kondoo but now he's saying lakini sasa anasema that he is saying that on the 14th day anasema katika siku ya 14 meaning four days from there kumaanisha siku 4 tangia pale now they must take the perfect lamb without defect sasa lazima wamchukue mwana kondoo asiye na dosari and slaughter at twilight na wamchinje wakati wa jioni let me explain to you something wacha niwaelezee kitu hapa that tells me hiyo yaniambia that when they acquire the perfect lamb mwana kondoo mkamilifu on the 10th day katika siku ya 10 and he says naye anasema to be slaughtered on the 14th day achinjwe siku ya 14 that means there are four days hiyo inamaanisha kuna siku 4 to check ya kuchunguza the lamb mwana kondoo for any defect kwa ajili ya dosari yoyote four days siku nne to inspect ya kuchunguza the lamb mwana kondoo for any defect kwa ajili ya dosari yoyote four days siku nne to analyze ya kuchunguza the lamb mwana kondoo for any defect kwa ajili ya dosari yoyote four days siku nne to examine ya kuchunguza the lamb mwana kondoo for any defect kwa ajili ya dosari yoyote four days siku nne to prove ya kuthibitisha the lamb mwana kondoo for any defect kwa ajili ya dosari yoyote four days siku Four days. Siku nne. Let me tell you this now. Wacha niwaambie hii sasa. I went and read the Bible. Nilienda na nikaisoma Biblia. And I saw the Messiah. Na nikamuona Masihi. Entering Jerusalem on a colt. Akiingia Yerusalemu on, on a colt. Kwa mwanapunda. On a colt. Kwa mwanapunda. On the 10th day. Katika siku ya 10. Of the month of Aviv. Ya mwezi wa Avivu. 
It was a Monday. And then, Alafu, for four days, kwa siku nne, until Thursday, hadi siku ya alhamisi, they accused him wali mushitaki, to the, the Pharisees and Sadducees. Na they accused him wali mushitaki, to Pilate wa, kwa Pilato, and Herod. Na Herodia. Pilate na Pilato, examined him akamchunguza for four days kwa siku nne tested him akamchunguza examined akachunguza analyzed him na akamchunguza proved him ah and found all the fact hey 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 and found no defect akuwa na lawama and found no defect hakupata dosari and he sent him to herod na akamtuma kwa herod checked him akamchunguza analyzed akamwangalia approved him akamudhibitisha tested him akamjaribu and found no defect na kupata lawama and send him back na akamuduma hey hey for four days kwa siku nne and they oh and they found no defect na wakupata lawama and pilate said na pilato akasema i wash my hands Naosha mikono yangu. He has no sin. Hana dhambi. Herode, Herode. I wash my hands. Ninanawa mikono yangu. He has no sin. Hana dhambi. And then, alafu, on the fourth day, katika siku ya 4, on Thursday, siku ya Alhamisi, the 14th day, four days from there. Siku ya 14, siku siku 4 tokea pale. Ha. Ha. The perfect Passover lamb of God. Mwana kondoo mkamilifu wa Mungu. My master, Bwana my wangi, savior and my lord. Mwana wangu na bwana wangu. Was slaughtered. Alichinjwa. Because they found kwa sababu walipata that he has no defect. Ya kwamba hana lawama. That means hiyo inamaanisha now he qualifies. Sasa alihitimu to be sacrificed. Kutolewa dhabihu in place of on behalf of kwani aba ya to atone for the sins of men kwa ajili ya ondoleo la dhambi ya watu our god mungu wetu is a perfect god ni mungu mkamilifu and that's why na hiyo ndio sababu he demands anadai only the perfect lamb mwana kondoo mkamilifu tu to die for others afe kwa ajili ya wengine hey hey I'm giving you the blueprint of salvation. Ninawapatia alama za wokovu. And he's saying, na anasema, it is in the perfect lamb. Iko katika mwana kondoo mkamilifu. The perfect blood. Damu kamilifu. Of the perfect pass over lamb of God. Ya mwana kondoo wa pasaka mkamilifu wa Mungu. And the Messiah, na Masihi, was slaughtered. Alichinjwa on the cross katika msalaba on the 14th day katika siku ya 14 look at what happened tazama kilichotendeka he was slaughtered on the cross alichinjwa msalabani on the 14th day katika siku ya 14 look at this now tazama hii sasa at twilight wakati wa jioni because the prophecy said kwa sababu nabii ulisema and the friends of the messiah na marafiki wa masihi the friends of the christ marafiki wa kristo they would stay from afar wangeangalia kutoka mbali and look to the other hill na kuangalia mlima ule mwingine as the messiah hung on the cross alone wakati ambapo masihi anasulubishwa ananinginia msalabani pekee and the sun would go down darkness would cover the sun would go down on him na jua litaanguka juu yake twilight litatua wakati wa jioni hey ndio today the church must get born again leo kanisa lazima liokoke the cloud of god has spoken with me wingu la bwana limenena pamoja nami the cloud came down wingu lilishuka chini and presented the clock na ikawasilisha saa and then covered it half half clock alafu ikaifunika nusu and Sa, gave the message the right na ikapeana ujumbe kumaanisha wingu lilisema Jesus of Nazareth is coming Yesu wa Nazareth anakuja because now he's saying kwa hivyo sasa anasema that when the cloud came down ya kwamba wakati wingu lilishuka chini and then he, sh he showed Moses alafu akamwonyesha Musa the golden clock ile saa ya dhahabu and it was going to be midnight na ilikuwa inaenda kuwa saa sita usiku and Moses went back to Israel to tell na, them na Musa akarejea Israeli kuwaambia about the midnight hour kuhusu saa sita ya usiku recently hivi karibuni the cloud comes down wingu linashuka chini and he shows me the midnight clock na ananionyesha ile saa ya saa sita usiku and he said look look it's going to be midnight na anasema tazama tazama yaenda kuwa saa sita usiku run to them 
kukimbia kwao now we understand the message sasa tunaelewa ujumbe kwa kanisa lakini maagizo yalisema that when the midnight hour comes ya kwamba saa sita usiku inapowadia for those who relied on the blood kwa wale ambao waliitegemea damu for those who depended on the blood kwa wale waliotegemea damu for those who trusted in the blood kwa wale waliotumainia ndani ya damu those who had faith in the blood wale walikuwa na imani katika damu those who believed in the blood wale waliamini katika damu he says anasema when the midnight hour comes wakati saa sita usiku inapokuja and he sees them na anawaona covered by the perfect blood wakiwa wamefunikwa na damu kamilifu of the perfect pass over lamb of god na mwana kondom kamilifu wa mungu he says anasema he will pass over you atapita juu yenu he is saying that on the 14th day anasema kwamba katika siku ya 14 When you slaughter the lamb at twilight unapomchinja mwana kondoo wakati wa saa sita usiku wakati wa jioni you are to take the perfect blood of the perfect pass over lamb of god inabidi uchukue damu kamilifu ya mwana kondoo mkamilifu but the lamb lakini mwana kondoo had to be slaughtered at the doorway right there itabidi achinjwe kwa mlango papo hapo so there was so much blood poured there kwa hivyo kulikuwa na damu nyingi liko imemwagwa hapo and after that it was smeared na baada ya hapo ikapakwa and then alafu he said alisema when the midnight hour came wakati saa sita usiku ipo napowadia death had to occur in egypt kifo lazima kingetendeka misri and when the destroyer came na wakati ule mwangamizi anapokuja and he saw the houses naone nyumba where the blood had been poured mahali ambapo damu ilikuwa imemiminwa meaning kumaanisha death had done its work there kifo kimefanya kazi yake pale death had happened there kifo kilikuwa kimetendeka pale so he went to the other side kwa hivyo alienda upande ule mwingine and slaughtered the first born na akachinja wazaliwa wa kwanza so these ones were safe kwa hivyo hawa walikuwa salama by nothing else sio kwa jambo lingine lolote it was not by moral excellence haikuwa kwa sababu ya tabia nzuri it was not moral uprightness haikuwa unyofu wa tabia it was not some kind of holy act haikuwa kwa sababu ya matendo fulani ya haki but it was basically squarely based on the blood of the lamb lakini haswa ilikuwa imezingatia damu ya mwana kondoo mkamilifu wa mungu the lord is using this to speak to the church globally now na bwana anaitumia kunena na kanisa ulimwenguni kote sasa he is telling the church ananiambia kanisa that hey church of christ ya kwamba hey kanisa la kristo i can see naweza kuona that the perfect pass of a lamb of god ya kwamba mwana kondoo mkamilifu wa mungu has been slaughtered amechinjwa and his blood poured na damu yake ikamiminwa hey church of christ hey kanisa la kristo ever since you received the lord tangia mlipompokea bwana are you really covered by the perfect blood na damu kamilifu of the perfect passover lamb ya mwana kondoo mkamilifu wa pasaka of god ya mungu and then you hear the whole church saying alafu nalisikia kanisa nzima likisema oh yes i am ah ndio ndi nimefunikwa and you hear the lord telling me run na unasikia bwana akiniambia kimbia huko and tell them na uambie no no you are not hapana hapana haujafunikwa why kwa nini because he says kwa sababu anasema that the blood ya kwamba damu of the perfect passover lamb of god ya mwana kondoo mkamilifu wa mungu is the ultimate sacrifice ndio dhabihu ya kiwango cha pekee he says na anasema there is no higher sacrifice kuna dhabihu nyingine zaidi it is the highest ndio ya juu kabisa the ultimate ambayo ni ya juu kabisa and the final na ya mwisho so go tell the church enda kaliambia kanisa that if they are covered by the blood ya kwamba ikiwa wamefunikwa na damu then why are they crying basi kwa nini wanalia Lord oh bwana Lord bwana look at me nitazame I am born again nimeokoka covered by the blood nimefunikwa na damu but i'm not yet delivered from sin lakini bado sijakombolewa kwa dhambi say no nasema la if you are covered by the perfect blood of the perfect passover lamb of god ikiwa umefunikwa na damu kamilifu ya mwana kondoo mkamilifu wa pasaka wa mungu it is the ultimate sacrifice ndio dhabihu ya pekee meaning kumaanisha it has ultimate power iko na nguvu za pekee anybody that is covered by it yeyote ambaye amefunikwa nayo immediately bapo hapo your identity changes kitambulisho chako kabadilika and your name changes na jina lako linabadilika and the way you walk changes There are certain benchmarks kuna alama fulani that speak about ambazo zanena kuhusu whether you are covered ikiwa umefunikwa with the perfect 
Passover left na, the blood. Na damu ya mwana kondo mkamilifu. But when you look at the church la, today. Lakini unapolitazama kanisa leo hii. The church in Berlin, Germany. Kanisa Berlin, New Germany. The church in Munich. The church in Geneva. Kanisa Munich, kanisa Geneva. Bath, Australia. Bath, Australia. Sydney, Melbourne. Sydney, Melbourne. The church in Toronto. Kanisa Toronto. The church in Congo Brazzaville. Kanisa Congo Brazzaville. The church in Kinshasa. Kanisa Kinshasa. Lubumbashi. Mumbashi. The Lubumbashi. Lubumbashi. The church in Brussels. Kanisa Brussels. The church in Latin America in Ka Brazil. Kanisa Latin America in Brazil. When you look at the church, unapolitazama kanisa. You can see that the church unaweza kuona kwamba kanisa is truly not covered. Kwa kweli halijafunikwa. By the perfect blood of Jesus. Na damu kamilifu ya Yesu. Because kwa sababu she's walking naked. Anatembea uchi and she's anointing homosexual bishops and the false prophets are there and it's a gospel of prosperity and money and your false apostles and they're teaching human theology and they're writing books and making money on DVDs on pamphlets they're going around and they're saying I am a motivation I'm an inspirational speaker. They are going around. They are preaching a gospel that is eating to the flesh and tickling to the ears. And yet the Lord says, Whosoever is covered by the perfect blood of the perfect when you see them out and the blood cover them they become from the children of the world they become the children of God the children of darkness children of light the slave to sin the workers of righteousness the people of the earth the children of God they become the kingdom of God that is the ultimate power that the perfect Passover lamb of God his blood beholds so the Lord sent me here to ask some serious questions the Lord sent me to ask the church Church of Christ. Ever since you became born again. Are you really covered by the perfect blood of Jesus? Because we have seen that when the midnight hour strikes, nothing else matters. Only the perfect blood of the perfect blood Passover lamb of God. It does not depend on how you worship. How many churches you built. How many people you led to the Lord. But that you may be found covered. By the perfect blood. And he says when the midnight hour arrives. Those who have trusted in the blood believed in the blood had faith in the blood those who relied on the blood depended on the blood covered by the blood they will be delivered let us look at the condition of the church before I jump somewhere else Hebrews chapter 6 4 to 6 the church of Christ in Nairobi in Nakuru the church of Christ in Copenhagen I've been to all those places this is what I see in the church Hebrews chapter 6 verses 4 to 6 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many are learning something? Thank you very much. Asante sana. Thank you. Asante. I know my time is running out so I need to move very fast. Najua wakati wangu na yoyoma nahitaji kusonga kwa haraka. Hebrews chapter 6 4 to 6. Wa Ibrania sura ya 6 mstari wa 4 hadi 6. Are you ready? He says, Anasema, it is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have 
tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, if they fall away to be brought back to repentance because to their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public shame, public disgrace. Kwa maana ni vigumu kuarejeza tena katika toba wale ambao wakati fulani walishapata nuru ambao walishaonja kipawa cha mbinguni ambao wamekwisha kushiriki katika roho mtakatifu wale ambao wameonja uzuri wa neno la Mungu na nguvu za wakati ujao kisha wakaanguka kwa kuwa kwa nafsi zao wanamsulubisha mwana wa Mungu mara ya pili na kumdalilisha hadharani What does he say here Anasema yapi hapa? Whom is he addressing here? Ana, anaambia nani hapa? He is essentially addressing the church of Christ. Kimsingi analiangazia kanisa la Kristo. Because this church kwa sababu hili kanisa has even received the Holy Spirit. Hata limempokea Roho Mtakatifu. And he saying Na anasema this church hili kanisa is crucifying the son of God all over again. Linamsulubisha mwana wa Mungu kote kote de, tena. By saying kwa kusema Lord Lord bana bana please tafadhali let jesus go back to calvary wacha yesu arejee calvary look tazama the first calvary is not enough for me calvary ya kwanza haijatosha kwangu if you look at the youth church in kenya ikiwa utalianga kanisa la vijana hapa kenya i read in the secular newspaper nilisoma katika majarida ya kiulimwengu today is friday right leo ni ijumaa sawa on fridays they have what we call night vigil kesha katika ijumaa wako na mikesha and they say we are modern now na wanasema sisi ni wa kisasa and then the youth church does a night vigil alafu vijana wanafanya mkesha wa usiku and if you see the way the girls are dressed na ukiona jinsi ambavyo wasichana wamevalia if you see the way the young men are dressed sisi wataangalia jinsi ambavyo vijana hawa wamevalia on friday night in church siku ya ijumaa jioni kwa kanisa if you see the way they are dancing ikiwa utaona jinsi ambavyo wanacheza wanacheza the secular newspaper has to write wale waandishi wa magazeti ya kidunia ya lazima waandike and say na kusema that their disco tech in church ya kwamba kuna disco katika kanisa it beats the disco tech in the streets inashinda disco ya mitaani even the dressing they said beats the world hata jinsi wanavalia wanasema inashinda ulimwengu if you look at the way the worship is taking place in this country ukitazama jinsi ambavyo ibada inaendelea katika nchi hii they dance showing their bodies wanacheza wakionyesha miili yao maumbile yao they, they show the body wanaonyesha miili yao look at my body tazama mwili wangu they, they do that wanafanya hivyo and then i ask myself alafu najiuliza mwenyewe that is immorality hiyo ni usherati what kind of worship is that ni aina gani ya ibada hiyo because you are telling them look at my body kwa sababu unaniambia tazama mwili wangu look that tazama hiyo that is called immorality hiyo inaitwa uasherati and then they say alafu wanasema that in that way they are worshiping jehovah ya kwamba katika njia hiyo wanamwabudu jehovah that means they are saying hiyo ina maanisha wanasema Lord Lord bwana bwana look you we are born again tazama tumeokoka but look the first calvary is not enough lakini tazama calvary ya kwanza haitoshi let him go back wacha arudi we need another lamb tunahitaji mwana kwa ndoa mwingine and yet he says na ile hali anasema that if the household it's too small ya for the lamb kwa nyumba ni ndogo kwa mwana kondoo then share it basi mshiriki Hey. 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 Meaning, kumaanisha, the perfect Passover lamb of God. Mwana kondoo mkamilifu wa Mungu. In Egypt, katika Misri, it was enough to literally save everybody at the midnight hour. Alikuwa anatosha kiadhisia kumwokoa kila mtu katika saa sita usiku. Because the midnight sacrifice kwa sababu dhabihu ya saa sita usiku must be a perfect sacrifice lazima iwe dhabihu kamilifu Isaiah 53 verse 7 Isaiah 53 mstari wa 7 What was happening in Egypt Kile ambacho kilikuwa kinatendeka Misri He was oppressed and afflicted yet he did not open his mouth he was led like a lamb to slaughter as, and as a sheep before her shearer is silent so he did not open his mouth alionewa na kuteswa hata hivyo hakufungua kinywa chake aliongozwa kama mwana kondoo apelekwaye machinjoni kama vile kondoo anyamazavyo mbele ya mkatae manyoya hivyo hakufungua kinywa chake you see what happened in Egypt unaona kilichotendeka Misri so that was the imagery the portrait the portrait of the messiah how he would be led to slaughter 
to die as an innocent substitute basi hivyo hiyo ndio taswira ya masihi chinzi ambavyo angeenda kuchinjwa kama dhabihu let me explain the blood hebu nielezee kuhusu damu everybody focus on me kila mtu mnilenge in israel katika israeli this is what the high priest does hiki ndicho kuhani mkuu anachofanya he does this anafanya hivi when he wants to enter there anapotaka kuingia pale everybody, everybody now focus this is kila mtu mnilenge hii ni nyeti on yom kippur wakati wa yom kippur yom kippur was a very interesting day in israel yom kippur ilikuwa siku ya kupendeza mno israeli that's the day we went to the highway highway high speed highways hiyo ndio siku tulienda katika njia kuu barabara kuu zenye kasi mno yes my daughter focus on me binti wangu that's, nilenge that's the day we went to the highways hizo ndizo siku tulipoenda katika barabara kuu and we slept on the highway you can sleep and fall asleep na unaweza kulala na kulala unaweza lala na ulale because people are fasting kwa sababu watu walikuwa wanafunga and nobody is driving na kuna mtu anaendesha gari i mean this just <laughs> The, the university students could go and sleep on the highway they know today no vehicle will come wanafunzi wa chuo kikuu waenda kulala kwenye barabara kuu wanajua leo hakuna mtu atakuja but anyway on yom kippur lakini hata hivyo yom kippur the day when the high priest entered the holy of holies wakati ambapo kuhani mkuu aliingia pata katifu papa takatifu look at what he did tazama alichotenda he always removed his priestly garment and left out kila mara alitoa vazi lake la kikuhani na kuliacha nje and he wore a civilian garment like the israelites na akavaa vazi la watu wa kawaida kama wa israeli and then with blood he entered the holy of holies alafu kwa damu aliingia mahali patakatifu papa takatifu and i remember somebody nami nakumbuka mtu that also left his glory in heaven ya kwamba pia aliacha utukufu wake mbinguni and came back na karudi came down here akashuka hapa and wore the civilian garment na akabadia vazi la wake kawaida and entered there na akaenda huko number 2 jambo la pili When the priest finishes wakati kuhani anapomaliza he comes anakuja and he stands by the doorway na anasimama kwa mlango look at what he does tazama anachofanya then he lifts up his hands alipo anainua juu mikono yake still bloody still bloody ikiwa bado angani na damu damu he lifts up his hand like this anainua mikono yake namna hii and he blesses the people na kuwabariki watu and he blesses israel na kubariki israeli And he uses numbers chapter 6. Na anatumia hesabu sura ya 6. May his glory shine on you may the may the Lord the prayer is there. Ombi the, bless, the blessing is there. Baraka and this now. Lakini sikiza haya sasa. Focus on me now. Mnilenge sasa. He stood like this look. Alisimama namna hii tazama. And he blessed the people. Na kuwabariki watu. Then he bless Israel. Alafu anaibariki Israeli. I know of somebody. Najua mtu that went down alienda chini and offered na akajitolea offered himself akajitoa mwenyewe wearing the civilian garment akiwa amevalia vazi la kiraia like the others kama wengine so he may substitute for them ili kwamba akawalipie akasimame kwa badala badala kwa niaba yao if he came in the kingly garment alikuja kwa vazi la kifalme he would need to be substituting for the kings itabidi ajitolee kwa niaba ya wafalme he had to wear the civilian garment ili bidi avalie vazi la kiraia and when he finish look what happened tazama kilichotendeka he said woman don't touch me akasema mwanamke usiniguse i have not yet entered bado sijaingia and when he entered na alipoingia and his blood na damu yake touch the mercy seat ikaguza kiti cha rehema of the ark of the new covenant of the lord ya sanduku la agano jipya la bwana when the lord took me into heaven wakati bwana aliponipeleka mbinguni and he brought me into his throne room na kanileta katika kiti chake cha enzi and the two kerubi carried na makerubi wawili wakibeba carried the ark of the new covenant of god wanabeba sanduku la agano jipya la mungu on the golden walkway katika ile njia mapito ya dhahabu with double strips of gold ikiwa na ile mistari miwili ya dhahabu the reddish brown gold and the, the, the yellowish richer gold ile nyekundu nyekundu dhahabu nyekundu nyekundu yenye manjano and the kerubi na kerubi as they were carrying the, the box carrying the ark of the new covenant walipokuwa wamebeba lile sanduku la agano jipya la mungu they were bowing their heads like this walikuwa wameinamisha vijo vyao na mnahi and they were walking sideways na walikuwa wakitembea pande pembeni kando kando 
And I remember nami nakumbuka he that was speaking with me here yeye aliyekuwa akizungumza nami hapa I asked him nikamuuliza why do they walk like that with heads bowed ni kwa nini wanatembea hivyo na vichwa vimeinama then he said kisha akasema because this place kwa sababu mahali hapa is the most holy place ni mahali patakatifu pa patakatifu in the throne room of god katika enzi ya mungu so when his blood and then he came out i know of him that took his disciples took his disciples i am now releasing the secrets of heaven he took his disciples and they stood at a place they stood at a place where the door is and when he stood there then the disciples disciples were here on the eastern slope of that mountain and he lifted his nail pierced hands like this and he blessed them and blessed the church and he entered he was raptured he was raptured and he was raptured He stood at the doorway like the high priest kama kuhani mkuu and he blessed the people na akawabariki watu and he blessed the nation of the church na akabariki kanisa akabariki taifa na kanisa and he went up na akaenda juu what is the meaning of that maana yake ni nini he say alisema at the midnight hour wakati wa saa sita usiku death must occur kifo lazima kitendeke judgment must take place hukumu lazima itendeke however hata hivyo for the family of god kwa jamii ya mungu which is israel and the church ambayo ni israeli na kanisa the first born of heaven mzaliwa wa kwanza wa mbinguni already offered himself tayari alijitoa mwenyewe that you are first borns ya kwamba wazaliwa wenu wa kwanza may not be killed wasiwawe i need to run my time is running out so you see the lord is sending me to the four corners of the earth to announce the dispensation that was long foretold in, in the bible that the dispensation of the cross and the blood would come back to the church and therein is the power to the gospel that when you saw the cripples walking yesterday the blind seeing so many deaf i don't know how many when you saw those miracles the lord is saying it is the power of the blood the church is faking miracles why because they have not relied on the blood they have not depended on the blood believed in the blood had faith in the blood they have not worshiped the blood but i am bringing back the blood and the cross that is where the power is why does he say that when you are eating the lamb pack your clothes when you are eating the passover lamb pack in your clothes with your sandals on the foot and he says and roast it on fire and he says roast it all anasema uichome yote nzima and he said don't leave any anything for tomorrow what does he mean by that that means isaiah 52 verse 13 to 15 can i explain that means he's saying he's saying everybody focus that when he offered jesus the messiah ya kwamba alipomtoa Yesu Masihi as the pass over lamb of sacrifice kama mwana kondoo wa pasaka wa dhabihu when you burn the lamb completely unaposti completely una, everything unapomchoma mwana kondoo kikamilifu kila kitu that means hiyo inamaanisha it was a complete sacrifice ilikuwa dhabihu kamilifu 
nothing was left hakuna chochote kilibakishwa that you can say unaweza sema kwamba let us do another sacrifice wacha tufanye dhabihu jingine that's why in Isaiah 52 verses 13 to 15 ndio sababu Isaiah 52 mstari wa 13 hadi 15 he described the Christ bruised anazungumzia kuhusu kuchipuliwa kwa Kristo he was bruised on the cross alichipuliwa msalabani and because he was bruised on the cross na kwa sababu alichipuliwa msalabani look at what happened tazama kilichotendeka now sasa He has defect. Ako na lawama. That's why whenever he meets me. Ndio sababu kila mara akutanapo nami in the dreams. Katika ndoto. The first thing he does is this. Jambo la kwanza analolitenda ndilo hilo. He always first show me the nail piece. Kila kwanza mara ya kwanza ananionyesha mkono ambao umedungwa misumari. In other words he's saying look look what I did. Kwa maneno mengine anasema tazama angalia nilichotenda. In other words he's saying Look it is me it is my identity Kwa maneno mengine anasema tazama ni mimi ni kitambulisho changu kitambulisho changu ni mimi They have now become part of his identity Sasa imefanyika sehemu ya kitambulisho chake In other words he's saying Kwa maneno mengine anasema Go to the four corners of the earth Nenenda katika pembe nne za dunia And ask them why have they forgotten this Na waulize kwa nini wamesahau hii In other words is asking Kwa maneno mengine anauliza Go to the four ends of the earth Nenda katika miisho nne ya dunia and ask them na waulize how come you don't know yawezekanaje hamjui that now i am bruised ya kwamba sasa nimechipuliwa now i cannot go back sasa siwezi nikarudi i cannot qualify siwezi nikahitimu now i am defective i sasa, I, I, i have defect sasa niko na dosari niko na lawama i cannot fulfill the perfect law of god perfect pass over lamp siwezi nikatimiliza sheria kamilifu ya mwana kondoo mkamilifu wa pasaka and when he says they should eat the lamb in, in haste na anaposema lazima wamle mwana kondoo kwa uharaka with their sandals on their feet na sabatu zao miguuni mwao and their clothes tucked in na nguo zao zimeingishwa vizuri ndani when you look at the hebrew definition the root word really of the word haste Unapoangalia neno la mzizi la Kiheberania la uharaka it says inasema it also means pia inamaanisha eating in a panic kula katika uoga eating in a hurry kula katika uharaka it relays a sense of a sense of a sense of fear inaonyesha kiashirio cha uoga alarm kuogopa a sense of danger ile kiashiria cha Hatari. So you partake of the lamb quickly because any moment now you are out of here. Kwa sababu sasa unaweza kula yule mwana kondoo kwa haraka dakika yoyote sasa umeondoka huku. Is the church in a haste? Je, kanisa liko katika uharaka? Precious people. Watu wa dhamani. Before we leave, kabla tuondoke. If there are people here who want to return to Jesus. Ikiwa kuna watu hapa wanaotaka kumrejea Yesu. You want to return to the Lord because you realized. Unataka kumrejea Bwana kwa sababu umegundua. The time is over. Ya kwamba wakati umekwisha. That it is time to personally partake. Ya kwamba ni ni wakati wewe kibinafsi kushiriki. To partake of the perfect Passover lamb of God. Kushiriki mwana kondoo mkamilifu wa Pasaka wa Mungu. That you may be saved at the midnight hour. Ili kwamba ukaokolewe saa sita ya usiku and lift up your hands very high basi ni wajumi kona yako juu kabisa i can see every pastor and overseer and bishop everybody is returning to the lord naweza kuona kila mchungaji na msimamizi wa maeneo na maaskofu wanataka kumrejea bwana repeat this prayer rudia ombi hili say dear jesus sema yesu mpendwa i surrender tonight Najisalimisha leo to the power of the blood kwa nguvu ya damu and i ask you lord na ninakuuliza bwana to cover me with the blood unifunike na damu the perfect blood Damu kamilifu of the perfect lamb ya mwana kondomu kamilifu 
and establish me. Now ni marishe in holiness. Katika utakatifu. Bring revival. Let a uvuvio of the Holy Spirit. In my ministry. Katika uduma yangi. In the mighty name of Jesus. Katika jina kubula Yesu. Today. Leo. I am born again. 